sort of planning on acquiring that in tonight and didn't go Yo, to plan. Welcome to the fam, how are we doing today? <laughs> That's how we do, we do it big here on the channel. Massive. One time, big up my guy, Papa Fan. Big fam. up Papa Reacts. Big up Papa Reacts. Well, we do it big. We're getting to that milli this year. Let's go! Push them numbers up, push them numbers go. up, let's go! So, so remember, <laughs> remember when I said surround yourself with the right people? <laughs> this, this is what I meant, guys. Let's go! This is it, this is it right here. <laughs> so we're about to have some fun. See you in the next one. What's good guys, back in work mode, doing what we should be doing on the channel, but we're working on a cool video right now. It's actually all around A-B testing and personalization. Got Jay on a Zoom call right now. Say what's up, Jay. What's up, guys? And this is how we do it. This is how we do it, most of the time. It's not always in person, but sometimes we, we just work by this, so. Pretty much, uh, Going to plan, but something I wanted to fill you in, I thought, you know what, we were talking about this and we were like, so much is happening right now. We should actually talk about it on the vlog. I think it's actually pretty important. So right now we're actually working with Prepper to make sure that there's a smooth deployment of their platform and you know everything works as we expect when we actually shoot the video. So that way you guys get the best experience. So I'm actually working directly with the team and I'll show you how we do it. So typically what we do is we get them into a Slack channel. So I'll show you guys the actual Slack. So right now we've got them in a Slack channel. They tend to make these like Prepper Cross Sunny collabs or you know, whoever we're working with. And then honestly, that's really it. Like it, it doesn't take no magic wizardry past that. Like that's typically how we work with any of these guys. And that's what I was mentioning before. Try and get out of communication with email as fast as possible. It's just too slow of a medium, but yeah. So that's what we're doing right now. I'm gonna shoot the actual video this is going to be a lifestyle video and we're going to premiere it hopefully on Sunday, which is two days from now. So that'll be a cool little video for you guys to go ahead and enjoy. And on a little update to go ahead and help my stomach situation, I have one been very good. Yes, I went out that day, but I was actually pretty good. I didn't drink. So a lot of my friends were drinking, but I actually just stuck to tonic water. So uh, tonic water and limes, they're very good friends of yours if you're trying to avoid the drink. So that actually helped out quite a lot. And something I've actually started today and I've done it in the past and I've actually thought it helped me out so much, especially with like my gut and other things like that is I've started to intermittent fast. So I'm doing a 18-6 method. So I start eating at 1 p.m., finish eating at 7 p.m. Not only does it help strip the weight off in a good way, but it also is very healthy for a number of reasons. You can check it out yourself, but I highly recommend it because for me, the payoffs and the trade-offs right now, especially with my stomach issue, is going to be big. So we've got two months, I'm gonna try and lean down because I'm planning to go to Jamaica with the boys in a bit. So a lot of fun stuff happening, but this month, power month for work. So I'm gonna get on this video right now and uh, yeah, see you in the next bit. So quick little question for Jay. Jay, sure. when we go live with a video sponsor or anything of that matter, how, what's the yeah. typical flow? Do we have scripts? How does the whole thing work? Give a little background behind the scenes. It's actually a lot, but on a quick note, we just have like a Notion page just for that sponsor, which has a, which has a database link to it, has all the information about that sponsor, you know, everything from scripts to all the calls we've had with them. We have a summary of those. And at the end, we just have like a final script uh, of talking points that Sunny is going to talk to in the live. And then that's what you see on screen. But what you see on screen is just like a minute of talking, but that requires like days of prep work, right? So you're just seeing the final product. So that's how we do it. Nice. So here's the example of a script. So we've got a script here. Now tend to basically guys, something to note as well. We don't just like, you know, get a script from a sponsor and just say whatever anyone wants us to say and just pay it. That's not how it works at all. Basically, firstly, we only work with brands that we actually like and we want to work with and the, the tech I find really cool here. So I want to showcase it to you guys. And two, those scripts are more like guidelines just so I don't forget certain important parts. For example, in this build, we're covering things like personalization, A-B testing, and all of those kind of, you know, fun areas in tech. And if I don't have the correct bullet points, especially when you're recording and getting carried away in the coding and the, the whole midst of recording, it can get a bit tricky to make sure you say everything that you wanted to say. So these are mainly like high level talking points, not like word for word scripts. It just helps us out in getting the client what they want and making sure that we deliver the most value to you guys. So yeah, little, little quick TED talk from me and Jay. Jay's gonna go watch June now, so it's a ledger.
something so beautiful about Dubai at this time. So it's currently around 5.41. And when it's like this hour, I get the perfect like sunset and it is actually just beautiful. Like this is actually stunning. And sometimes I'll just sit outside, enjoy the sunset and take it in. Just be grateful. Also, I want to show you guys, I didn't actually record my workout today, but Royal Boy's in a bit of a madness lately. So, hit a big strength training workout today, about hour and 45. That's very long in the gym, but I'm not going to lie, me and Neil just chat a lot of the time as well. So, don't believe these numbers. About 400 calories, to be honest. And then, we've got the stair stepper, and this one, honestly, I'm trying to incorporate cardio big time into my routine right now. So, yeah, I tend to hit about 30 to 45 minutes three times a week. And your boy, you, yeah, your boy's gonna get lean, I'm telling you. This is how my body's stubborn, guys. 2,000 calories plus all of this, it's the only way I drop weight. So, little update on my lifestyle routine, okay? So I'm trying to get a bit leaner, just for summertime, so, you know, I can enjoy a bit of the sun, and you know, tops off, all that good stuff. So with that, I'm actually using my fitness pal. Now, my fitness pal, awesome app, and I'll tell you guys my macro. So I am currently on 2,000 calories a day, which is, yes, you might be wondering, six foot three, pretty big dude. It's, it's, it's quite low, I ain't gonna lie, it's quite low. I'm on 200 grams of protein because it's pretty much a gram per pound of body weight, uh, 150 grams of carbs and 67 grams of fat. So you can see I track it all through this app. And uh, honestly, my fitness power is probably one of the best ways I've ever been able to control my physique. So if I don't track, it's really hard to just kind of, you know, I'm always second guessing that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna take you along with me right now and just cook up my last meal of the day because as I mentioned earlier, I am now intermittent fasting. So I've got an hour and 20 minutes to eat a thousand calories, which would be pretty easy. So uh, let's, let's start cooking. There really is something like therapeutic about cooking. I don't know what it is, but like I had a meal prep company for a while and I'll be honest guys, like cooking is like, it's just peaceful, you know? Like when you're, especially when you're sitting at that damn desk all day working, if you're not cooking for yourself, just give it a try and you, you'll kind of get what I mean. I mean, you might not, you might just be like, that's dumb, Sonny, order some food or chipotle. Uh, I love, bloody love chipotle, I told you, but anyway, different topic. I find it therapeutic. Also, I just realized my uh, my rice choice was the curry Indian. So talk about being a proper stereotype Indian. Yeah, this is uh, just happens. Quick little taste test. It'll do. It'll damn do that. that. Boy's getting good. I just know there's gonna be some health critic out there saying, Say, why are you using the microwave so much? I get it. I know. But we got we got apps to build, so shut up. Also, I need to use this more. This thing is actually a beast, like this Nutrico. I don't make the most of it, but it's a pressure cooker. I always think the thing's gonna blow up though, so don't be scared about that. The thing I like about intermittent fasting is you tend to have pretty big portions at the end of the day. So I need a thousand calories right now. That is a thousand calories exactly. Measured out 340 grams of lean 5% beef, 250 grams of rice, and then I don't measure my greens. So yeah, we're gonna go eat right now. Quick little hack guys. So my buddy Kiz told me a little trick with apples, right? Slice them up into these little thin slices. This is one apple and there was quite a lot in this bowl. I promise you it's one of the best snacks you can have. And uh, if you know, you know. It's actually a, such a good snack. <coughs> Granny Smith for the win. Back on recording mode. So I want to show you guys a little cool gizmo gadget thing that I've set up. And basically, look at this, look. Pow. 
and then wait for it, wait for it, say I need some light, and boom. Look, that's so cool. I'll show you how I did it. So I use this thing right here, which is the Stream Deck, and you can see I programmed it. I've got the actual intensity of the light like so, and I've got the temperature, so you can make it more of a cool light, more of a warm light, turn it down, so forth, all from the flick of the wrist. So pretty, pretty cool stuff. So now I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a video which is long overdue, in my opinion. I need to make this one. I'm very excited for you guys to see it. A little behind the scenes right now. Three, two, one. Ready. Behind the scenes right now. See, we've got the main A7S behind there. And then that's what you're seeing here, a Streamlabs. And if you guys are wondering how I do it all, on my right hand, whenever I'm live, I simply have set these up so it can, it's got different scenes. So I've got photo, like zoom, screen, and this stuff. So if I press like, for example, zoom, wow, in my face. If I press like transition, douche, we go into the, the main screen. And then you get this laptop screen right here. So this is how I'm actually doing it half the time. So look, I can go ahead and just, you can be like, yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to another episode. And today we're gonna talk all about the code. Let's jump into it. And you can see, just like that. And you get pretty good with doing this like, so whatever you see, that's what's actually happening behind the scenes. Pretty cool. Now, we're about to go and record. Yo, what is going on, Papa Fam? It's your boy, Sunny, and we're back with A-B testing. 2,000 years later. Recording done. Like, when I tell you sometimes, like, recording these clips are like, it gets tiring. You know, like, trying to break down these bigger topics, but it's all worth it because you guys drop some really nice comments afterwards, and I'm like, if I can help one person out, my job is done. I'm happy. So I'm glad you guys are enjoying the content um, to come on the channel. So this is like future Sunny talking um, because there's a lot of good content coming on the channel right now. We've got A-B tests, we've got Microsoft Collabs, we've got loads of good stuff happening. So enjoy that coming out. Right now, everyone's phone in Dubai is going crazy and I'll show you guys. Apparently, they've got some crazy weather warning at the moment. So you guys can see right here, Look at that. So everyone's phone goes absolutely nuts and it's pinging off. And I'll show you a video right now of what's actually happening. Look at this, guys. So apparently, that's the rain in Dubai right now. What? Apparently, that's like a few hours away from here. So this is a problem in Dubai. They make it rain and then they make it rain too heavy and then they can't figure out how to stop the rain. But it is what it is, and uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> my, my, you might see some clips of it. Good morning, guys. New day, and look what happened last night. So Dubai, if you didn't know, seeds the clouds. So down there right now, I don't know if you can see. Look at that, guys. Holy crap. So, yeah. We're about to go to the gym, so I don't know if this is the smartest idea, but yeah. A funny thing that happens actually is everyone's phone goes crazy sometimes. I like early hours in the morning with the safety alert on iPhone and oh my god it freaks me out. It's like the purge. Mad. So as you if you can't tell, pretty still pretty tired. So about to scoop my ghost legend. I'm stacking this today with the pump and uh, it's gonna be a good one. So imagine this guys, just got to the gym. I'm gonna show you how bad the flooding can get in Dubai. Look at that. That's crazy. That is like a little ocean right now. <laughs> Damn. And you see cars driving on the other side of the road. That bit's the shallow part. And then it gets really deep over there. Luckily, I parked on a ledge. So hopefully, it should be okay. So update. I actually had to drive back through like 20 puddles just to get back in, in one piece with the car. Luckily, the Tesla, you know, pushed it through. But I can't lie. There's so many cars that I saw get stuck. So hopefully, everyone's all right today. But guys, just, just check this out. Honestly, like... This is this is insane weather right now. So in Dubai, 
this is the situation obviously i know they do the cloud seeding but i think they need to chill a little bit because right now it's pretty wild so all of this is puddling out and uh yeah it was getting uh it was getting worse and worse, I just couldn't risk it. So there's actually a, a little video that my trainer took where we, at one point we were opposite each other, looking at each other like, do we stay or do we drive away? <laughs> and uh, I'm so glad we, 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 we left when we did because I think that could have been a pretty bad situation if I stayed. So anyway, gonna hit the downstairs gym for some cardio. Hopefully there's no leaks or anything because that tends to be quite common in Dubai. But otherwise, downstairs cardio, clothing, Day in the life of uh, rainy Dubai. Smash the workout. Now, something that I find just crazy about Dubai is that rain like crazy earlier. Like I'm talking puddles that were flooding cars, all like everything that you can imagine was happening. And then literally in the time taken to have a shower, this happens. The sun's back out and the, cli and, and the skies are clear. So, uh, what I mean, like, it's, it's, it's wild. Like now, you can see the puddles already started drying up. Yeah, just I don't understand. Although, hmm, that, that, that's interesting. Just stop messing with the clouds, please. For the love, for the love of God. Like, it, it causes us so much headache. Stop it. Go to England if you want rain. Done. So I actually came on here to give you guys a quick little lesson on how to actually invoice let's say if you're a software consultant and you're working for someone this example is basically one of our developers i was trying to wire over some money we had a couple of um i wouldn't say it was issues just a couple of learning steps so i thought i would share them with you guys and make it a bit easier for you so whenever you work with anyone so let's just say you've got a client or let's say you're working for a software consultancy company and you need to basically get paid for your service at this point you have a few options now option one you can do a wire transfer this is typically the easiest way. It's typically the least amount of fees, but it's the most details required. So there's a little bit of friction sometimes. So you have to provide a couple of details. Now, the ideal details that you should be providing, your address, your full name, your email, and things like your Swift or an IBAN, depending on where you are in the world. If it's America, typically it's Swift. If it's uh, international elsewhere, it's our IBAN number and then your account number, routing number and your account type. So for example, if it's the US, I know you guys have checking savings accounts. Uh, internationally elsewhere, you don't actually need that. Typically an account number is enough and it's usually inside of the IBAN. So those are a couple of things. Your second option is to actually go ahead and use something like Stripe. Now with Stripe, depending on the payment method that is used, you can actually go ahead and get a couple of fees associated. So if you do, the highest fees that I've tend to have found is if I bill one of my clients with PayPal. So if I give an easy, quick PayPal link, yes, it's easy for them to pay. However, there will be a fee that's deducted from that amount. So especially if it's one currency to another currency, PayPal, in my opinion, doesn't do the best rates. Now, if you do a Stripe link, this is by far the easiest that I have found to get paid. There are lots of other services that you can use, but with Stripe, for example, I would always recommend that whatever price you've agreed to, you go ahead and factor in that there could be a 2.5% or around that range deduction from the amount. So when you priced originally, you can either do two things. You can either accept that you'll lose 2.5% for the convenience aspect, or you can simply just increase your price to factor in that 2.5% deduction. I personally think it's actually easier, especially if you've got a client who's on the fence of working with you, to make it the most easiest approach to get paid. So Stripe links, especially when you're first building a relationship with a new client, that is way more important just to go ahead and get the payment down easy as possible, as opposed to going ahead and getting them to add you as a new beneficiary, set up the wire transfer and all that good stuff. Once you've built the initial relationship, 100% you could do wire transfers, but for the initial one, sometimes it's better just to take the little hit of percentage so that you get paid and you start building on that relationship. And if my dev is watching this right now, I appreciate you. I'll actually shout him out right now. So Omar is actually one of my developers. He's building a React Native project for us right now at the Pop Fam. And uh, yeah, we just had this exact discussion. So it's one of those times where I've really noticed that I should actually pick this up, share this with the rest of you guys so you can all learn from it. So hope that helps. In short, moral of the story, make it so damn easy to get paid. Simple as. 
Now, another thing that I want to mention as well is that alongside having a contract to work with somebody such as a consultancy firm, I would also highly recommend that at the end of your payment intervals, so let's say you've worked for one month and then they've asked for, you know, you want to get paid. So at that point, you would issue an invoice with all of the details I mentioned previously. Plus, you want to mention the net time frame to get paid. So if it's net 30, it means that at the time of issuing that invoice, you've given them 30 days to pay you. You can do net seven, you can even do like the same day if you wanted. But the point is that typically net seven to net 30 is a nice little range, right? So I would highly recommend that you don't always just push it on them to get paid straight away. So it should be a bit more of a leniency. I would always recommend something like net seven or you know net five. So that way you've got at least a little five day like window and actually just arrange your finances. So that way you're always supporting yourself to allow for that flexibility because sometimes these businesses can be a little bit busy or it can be a little bit hectic. Either way, it's their responsibility, but you should cover yourself by issuing the correct invoices with the right details. So currently, guys, I am working on a Microsoft video. Now, if you're watching this video, it means that two things happened. It means that one, I'm building a crazy app right now that you guys are gonna love, which you're gonna probably see before this video drops or after this video drops, but it'll be out. And if it is out, I'm gonna link it right here. And the second thing is that the AB testing video is now live. So that video was sick. We teamed up with the guys over at Purpose CMS. Guys like AB testing, personalization on the website, so sick, like so, so sick. And the video is live now. So that will be popping up right now in the corner of your screen. So make sure you go check them out. But this is typically what my evenings look like. So I'm kind of just pretty much now, my computer's locked now, but pretty much, you know, I'll be sitting there, working away, just coding. Yeah, I tend to like annoyingly get into a really good flow state at these like these like crazy hours, like midnight, one, two o'clock. And I use my anchor, as I've talked about in other videos, which is the gym. So I use that as my anchor to not sleep at a crazy hour. So if I know that I'm training at 10 o'clock, then I'm going to make sure that I'm in bed by like at the latest, like 1.32. But I'll be honest, I, I mean, let's be real. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I've stayed up to like four, five, six, seven in the morning before coding, but I try not to do that. So it's not, it's not healthy. So typically I will be, you know, pretty much like wrapping up at one o'clock, maybe then I like brush my teeth, get in bed, I'm out sleeping because yeah, you put your health first. Trust me. I've had a lot of developers who say, but suddenly I want to code 12, 14 hours. I've done it as well. I know what you're saying, but all I'm going to say is sometimes and comment down below if you've experienced this, sometimes you'll be sitting there at two in the morning trying to figure out something and then I promise you, you'll be sitting there for hours. Go to sleep and please comment down below if you have experienced this. Go to sleep and then I swear to God, I've dreamt the solution in my mind and I've woken up and been like, I know what to do. Like, why didn't I think of that? I've literally woken up so many times and I'm like, why didn't I think of that? And, and I'm telling you, it's just fatigue. Sometimes it's fatigue. It's in your brain sometimes. You know exactly what you needed to do, but you're so tired and sleep deprived that you just ain't got the energy to be working at the rate that you need to. So sometimes the best thing you can do, close the laptop lid, go and get a good night's sleep, come back the next day fresh and tackle it again. Remember, it's consistency. It's not just about sprinting for one week and then burning out consistency. Everyone always asks, how am I coding for so long on these streams and doing everything else? Trust me, just build up your stamina slowly. You know, it's like the gym. You don't start off running and doing, you know, like six days a week, seven days a week. You, don't, you just don't do that in the beginning. Like you have to work your way up. So same goes for coding. Give yourself the credit where credit is due. You know, celebrate the small wins. You know, if you've coded for a couple of hours, amazing. If you coded for half an hour, amazing. Just good on you. But don't expect to be starting off coding like ridiculous sprees and also it's not always the best thing. So yeah, little cool tip. Sometimes I think that it's just good to just turn the camera on and just talk to you guys. So a little health update on the whole situation because I know some of you have been DMing me asking how it's going and in my recent video you guys are all dropping comments about you know different tips and tricks which I want to say firstly right now thank you so much because that means so much to me especially with this whole gut issue right now. It's just a bit of an annoying problem and I can appreciate every bit of support I can get. So thank you all so much. And also just like, I wanna really kind of, you know, give the response that's deserved. Guys, the comments on these videos, insane. Like you guys are loving the vlogs and I'm just like, 
I, I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it. I love this and it has completely like brought back that fire in me. So thank you so much for all of that. Like the support, the positive words, the encouragement. And like, honestly, remember what I said, guys, if it helps one person, my, I like, it's, it's just worth everything to me. So I see all these beautiful comments, like about all you guys explaining how, you know, it's helped you with your jobs, it's helped you motivate you, it's helped like, you know, make you feel normal that I am too going through like things in my life and it's not just perfect uphill linear path. And that, that normalizes things for you. And I'm so glad because that is really the reality sometimes. And if it can help you guys out by just sharing that, if it's motivating to know that, okay, he got something in his life and then he went over it and now he's succeeding as well. I'm here for it. I will share everything. Honestly, I, I really like, I'm there to help you guys. And I just, I can't express enough. Thank you so much for pushing the vlogs the way you guys are. It's absolutely awesome and incredible. And I'm here for it. They're going to keep on coming and it's sick. Now, quick little update on my health side of things. So I've done something and it seems to be working. So currently I take a little bit of meds. These are like some little sachets, they're prolonged release granules. They help me out a little bit, but I'm trying to not rely on that. I've found a couple of hacks that I want to share with you. One, apples and rye bread. Don't ask why, but in the hospital they kept giving me apples and I'm telling you now, green Granny Smith apples are the OG for this stuff because they seem to be fixing me up pretty well. So I'll have like an apple, but I do this little trick. I cut it up into thin slices because I'm on a diet as well. So uh, it's like a little, it's honestly the nicest hack and sweet. I don't know how I've, I haven't thought of this. Shout out to my friend, Kiz. He showed it to me when I went over to his place and I was like, what the hell? I've never eaten an apple like this in my life, but it's a game changer for it. So apples, well, who would have thought? I underestimated the power of an apple. Uh, and then rye bread. So in my breakfast, where well, I typically have brown bread, I just switched to rye bread. Rye bread is super high in fiber and that fixes a lot of my issues. So like, honestly, it's helped out a lot. So if any of you are experiencing the same thing, that's great. Upping my vegetable intake has really helped as well as drinking a ton of water. I've cut down on the amount of coffee I drink as well while everything's healing up. Uh, that's tough as a developer, as we all know, but that seemed to help out. But the, honestly, the biggest thing that I've actually noticed that's been like, honest, like the last couple of days have been game changer for me. Guys, I've just started intermittent fasting again. I did this before when I was younger and all intermittent fasting is, is you have a window to eat your food. So there's different ratios depending on how intense you wanna be. Some people do like an eight hour, you know, 16 split. So you're fasting for 16 hours. I personally do an 18 hour fast and it sometimes becomes 19, 20 hours to be honest with you. And then the rest of the day, you, you get a window to eat. So if I'm doing an 18 hour fast, then I'm eating for six hours. So for me, what I do is I train in the morning so I hit the gym in the morning and I'm completely fasted. Then I come back, by the time I've showered up, by the time I've kind of, you know, got a little bit of a groove going, then I'm hungry, one o'clock comes and that's when I break my fast. And that has honestly been like, you know, completely fine. I don't feel hungry at all. I'm actually completely good and I just eat my food, you know, cause I know that's when I should be eating. And I will eat up until 7 p.m. And I'll tell you the truth, guys. I don't even honestly wait until 7 sometimes. I finish my food at like 5, 6 o'clock. And I just kind of cram it into that window. And right now I'm on 2,000 calories because I'm trying to drop weight. I'm currently on 150 gram carbs, 67 grams of fat, and 200 grams of protein. That levels up to 2,000 calories. Now, the reason why you might be wondering, but he's six foot three. Why is he eating less so little food? Because if I'm honest, guys, I don't walk as much as I should in Dubai. It's getting hotter, and I just don't find that I get the time. Like, I just don't go for as much walks as I should. So I up my cardio in the gym, and I do cardio three to four times a week after my gym sessions, and I hit the gym five times a week. So that, I feel, combined with the calorie deficit of to hit 2,000 calories, has helped me a ton. But when you throw intermittent fasting in the mix, it's like, boom, the whole thing is incredible for loads of reasons. Think about it. You stop eating at 7 p.m. And honestly, I can sleep better. I'm not sitting in bed thinking, oh my God, I'm stuffed. I never feel like, I don't feel it's a problem to eat 2,000. I've even done like 3,000 calories before in intermittent fasting windows. And I've done four hour windows. Like it, it's not that hard. It sounds hard, but I promise you just give it a try because this has been like, this has been life changing. Like I'm telling you right now, my stomach issues have seemed to be completely fine. My stomach is being more forgiving with certain types of food since I've been intermittent fasting. And I just feel like I've got great energy. Like I don't crash. 
Like I, my energy remains consistent and I'm not spiking my insulin because I'm eating single ingredient foods. Eddie Abu, the man, <laughs> honestly pushed some good out there because since I've been doing that, I feel great. I eat more healthy fats and I tend to break my fast with more higher fat food. So in case you're wondering what he breaks it with, typically I'll have like six eggs, three pieces of rye bread, and I will have um, like three to five grams of ghee butter on the plate and I have one avocado. So typically quite high fat because the eggs and avocado and the butter. But honestly, guys, I, I feel great. Like I feel so good. I feel like a whole different person compared to like even a week ago. So I can't stress this enough. And I think this is really important for you guys as well because if anyone else, like I saw a couple of comments in the last video, if anyone else is having gut issues or any kind of you know, indigestion issues, especially because developers, we sit in this chair all day and we don't do much else. And I know if you're going to the office and you're in the same kind of setup, you know, yeah, you're walking to and from the office, but unless you're truly hitting the gym session, and even then, like our lifestyle is pretty sedentary. Like if you're not really doing much, you're just kind of sitting in a chair coding. So game changer, I feel you guys will all benefit from this if you just give it a try. But again, do what fits in your in your in your world. Don't worry, like nothing is perfect and not perfect. All I'll say is eat single ingredients foods because the processed stuff, you know, like it's okay in moderation, but like if you can start eating like pure chicken breast instead of like, you know, this like this breaded chicken with like a hundred billion things inside of it and all, all this kind of crap. Like just eat the single ingredient foods. And that just means that where you can see the list of ingredients is very simple on the back. It should just be like, if you're, if you're getting a chicken, a whole chicken, it should just be chicken. Sometimes it's just chicken water and then they add like sugar. But like, you know, sometimes it's like they add acid and all this other random preservatives and shit. And you're just like, okay, I could have just got a simple chicken breast cooked here. This is, you know, try and be a bit more healthy on that front. For me, it's been game changer because when I tell you my gut went crazy the last couple of months, which is why I ended up in hospital, it's just not worth it. Like, it's just not worth it. And I felt drained and I slowly was getting more and more drained. And guys, like, I can't perform at my work or my, my, like my mental state was everywhere. I felt foggy all the time. My emotional state was up and down. It's just not worth it. Now I feel great and honestly, I can't complain. So yeah, a little bit of a rant, but little tip for y'all is if you want to start fasting, I use this app called Fastic. So it's actually... I'll share it on the screen right now. There you go, Fastic, F-A-S-T-I-C, okay? And this app is so good. Like when I tell you, it, it gives you a nice breakdown. So right now you can see my breakdown is here and it says like, you know, 15 hours left or something like that. And the cool part is it, honestly, and this is not a sponsored video, this is just a cool app, right? They have like, you know, different sections. So it tells you when you're in ketosis, for example. Uh, and that's basically when your body starts to burn fat. It tells you when you go into the fat burning stages, all that kind of stuff. So honestly, this has been game changer for me. And if you've got one of the newer iPhones, it even comes up on the bottom of my screen. I know this might be intense for some of you, but you don't have to have that. But for me, I love that. So I can see, okay, I've got 15 hours left to I can eat. And trust me, I know it sounds crazy. Like, you know, oh, Sonny, you're fasting for 18 hours. What? Guys, you're just not hungry. And you need to learn to turn that off in your brain. That, and if I do get hungry, I just drink water. Like for, I'm, when I talk about fasting here, I'm talking about fasting, but you can have water, you can have coffee, black coffee with no sugar, no milk or any extras like that. It has to be zero cow basically. Uh, and green tea, I think. Yeah, green tea, I think you can have and even regular tea, but you can't have milk, right? So anything which has calories inside, so that like milk or sugar or yeah, stuff you can't have, it'll break your fast that you can have just water. Honestly, and I tell you, it's, it's not that hard, guys. I just literally fill this bottle up over and over and over again. And if I get super hungry, I just drink more water. And it's, and I, and trust me, like you're, when it comes to your eating window, cram in those big meals. And I promise you as well, I just have so much more time. Like I get my eating done and then I can just focus on with the rest of my day. And if you're busy and you're kind of doing 101 things, like right now, that's how I feel. There's just so much going on that I'm trying to get involved and I'm not capturing it on camera. I'm trying my best to, but yeah, like it just helps a ton. So ran over, well, positive ran over, but I hope you enjoyed that little segment. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna just start picking up the camera more and taking you on with me. This is actually the bigger camera. The quality is amazing on this one. so. I really want to just kind of, yeah, like stop overthinking it and just pick you guys up and just take you around. I think that would be so cool. 
but let me know again in the comments more of what you want to see more feedback on these vlogs do you like the style that we're doing when it comes to like some bit of information around my daily life or do you want it just to be more raw just let me know in the comment down below smash the thumbs up and i appreciate you guys love every single one of you and yeah until the next video guys it's your boy sunny aka papa react and i will see you in the next one peace I'm